One hot topic in transplantation got a big boost earlier this year when the FDA granted approval to two companies to begin clinical trials for transplanting genetically modified animal organs into patients with kidney failure, or better known as xenotransplantation. So what does this mean for the future of this next frontier in transplant surgery? Dr. Mohammed Mahuddin is here to discuss. Such a pleasure to sit down with you again. Thank and you very much for having me. Absolutely. And to be talking about, you know, what we said is probably the next frontier when it comes to transplantation. I want to get started, though, with this FDA approval. What does this mean? This means that, you know, they, they have allowed a limited number of transplantations to be done in human. As you know, before this, uh, um, you have done transplantations in human, but those were for patients who were you know, in dire need of right. the, of an organ and were not, and human organs were not available. But in this case, this is a, this is a, like a normal uh, clinical trial where they will allow about uh, five to six transplants being done, not together, but one after the other. Okay. And, and once the, you, uh, you show some, uh, you know, success, they will allow up to 50 transplants to be done. Uh, and this is this is kidney transplantation. Right. This has to be very exciting, though, because it means not only is xenotransplantation getting recognition and attention, but hopefully that means more money, more funding. Yeah, I mean, so but the funding, uh, you know, there there are very few agencies or industries uh, who are interested in funding these clinical trials. There are there are about two uh, companies who are. Uh, sponsoring this these cl clinical trials, uh, but we need more because you know there's a greater need of uh, uh, more uh, transplants being done, mm -hmm. and and each transplant costs a lot. I mean you know it costs about hundred one point five million dollars each, and uh, you also uh, need a lot of support from the clinical staff and the research staff, and it adds up. The longer the transplant lives. Uh, you know, the more uh, is the money. So we need we need not only government to get involved in this, uh, we need all other industrial partners to, to contribute to it also. When it comes to xenotransplantation, what are the big complications that still remain? So the, the rejection remains the main complications. As we are the learning uh, in, in human uh, transplantations, we are finding new new culprits mm -hmm. and uh, we have to design new uh, new methods to overcome these uh, these new uh, new barriers that we are facing however you know since we are doing it in humans we are better equipped because we we, we have uh, expertise in allotransplantation so a lot of that can be applied to uh, xenotransplantation in terms of patient care and and you know nursing care and all the other uh, areas uh, but there are some immunolo immunological barriers right. that that are a little bit different from allotransplantation, and we are we are encountering uh, you know more and more of those as we are doing more uh, clinical xenotransplantation. Is creating the right anti-rejection medications the answer? More than that, uh, creating the right donor pick is the answer. Oh. So 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 far we are experimenting on uh, picks that are that. 10 of their genes are modified or okay. uh, in one of the companies about like 69 genes, but most of them are for, for a virus. But the, the goal is that at one time, if we can modify the genes to an extent that we don't even need to have immunosuppression, that would be an ideal condition. Okay, that would be huge. Yeah. Uh, earlier this year, uh, surgeons at Mass General um, completed a successful kidney transplant with a gene edited pig kidney. And the patient so far is doing very well. Do kidneys seem to be the most viable organ when it comes to xenotransplantation? And if so, why is that? So, I mean, you know, kidney has a backup system. So if, if the kidney fails, the patient can go back to dialysis. Okay. However, the, the patients who are becoming eligible for xenotransplantation are the ones where the dialysis option is also limited where, because you need vessels uh, for the cannulas for dilation. Some of these patients have you know, used up all their vessels so they are not no more candidate for dialysis also. But again, you know, compared to heart, the kidneys have a backup, Ki mm. hearts don't. That's a really good point. Are there still ethical concerns about xenotransplantation? And if there are, would those concerns not outweigh the organ shortage? So you always balance, you know, benefits versus uh, 
you know, the concerns, right? Yeah. So uh, I think that the, the, the number of people who are waiting uh, for organ transplants throughout the world, the benefit will outweigh the concerns, right? And, and I think these ethical concerns are valid. And we all are trying to, you know, answer uh, and, and try to do it in the, in the best way possible. Um, the main thing is, is the consent. We, we want to make sure that the patient is aware of what he's going through. Mm. We are not making any unnecessary promises. They understand that, you know, this is an experimental pro 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 procedure and they, things can go wrong and we are learning from it. And, 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 and it's a great, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they're kind of you know, uh, helping us learn uh, as we go along. Right. That's true. Final question for you. Um, I recently read that one surgeon, a transplant surgeon, says that xenotransplantation will be widely available to everyone within the next 10 years. You and your team at the University of Maryland have been working on this for a very long time. Do you think we are just one decade away from xenotransplantation being commonplace? I, I, I hope so. It all depends on how these clinical trials go. Mm -hmm. uh, if these pa patients uh, start to live for a long period of time uh, and, you know, we, we have other um, um, organs uh, um, getting permissions like heart, which I will, would love to, yeah. uh, you know, that it's, it's, a, it's a possibility. And we certainly need to improve one immunosuppression and the genetics, as you mentioned before. And, and uh, I'm very optimistic about it. Wonderful. Well, given that the World Transplant Congress happens once a decade, hopefully the next time we all convene, we'll be talking about some great progress being made. Definitely, definitely. And um, I mean, you know, for the audience, we, we are having this uh, International Xenotransplant Association Congress in Geneva in the uh, end of September. I would like to invite everyone to that. I'm the president of that, uh, that yeah. association also. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time today and yeah. for all your hard work. Thank you very much.